Those of you who have been paying attention will have seen the 2015 solar uh, solstice video and I, you know, we've had various comments and I've chatted to various people and it occurs to me and in previous years this sort of thing would have been uh, useful to me to see exactly what it's like to run a wind and solar system throughout the year. So this video is an introduction to a year in the life. Every month I'm going to do two or three little short video clips all gathered together into one video and they will show what's happening at the time, how the performance is and also most importantly if anything breaks down what we've got to fix. Any slight improvements I make general details a bit of a sort of I don't know what they call it now it's a diary of some form anyway hopefully you'll enjoy this and we'll see how it goes and progresses over the year but as I say this is just the introductory so we're going to follow on with what's happening in the battery shed at the moment so here's the uh, battery shed um, this is the solar input board let's just have a look that's the solar wall 6 times 240 watt Suntec with uh, 1400 watts worth of panels installed capacity that is that's the solar mound the mound array is made up of two times Moser Bayer 210 watt panels plus another two plus four times 120 watt Kyocera 12 volt panels these are very early had them for over 10 years and that is 1300 watts from installed capacity the solar trailer that's both of the trailers solar trailer 6 times Moser Bayer 210 watt panels plus 6 times Suntec 240 watt panels you can hear now the inverters just kicked in that's both of those trailers so that's uh, 2.7 kilowatt 2700 watts then the next amp meter is over here which is the solar boom and the solar boom is made up of four 12 volt panels on the left they're 140 watts each then we've got a motley collection here the one on the right plus the one on the top are 190 watt high voltage panels there's something weird like 38 volts and the two in the middle the squarer ones are Kyocera's but they're 200 watts but they're 26 volt so they're a little bit low whereas the other ones are a little bit high so we have a high voltage and a lower voltage panel in series so there's two pair there the problem being that the high voltage panels are only 5 amps so the each pair of panels is limited to that current 1300 watts that's a bit of an approximate then the next one is part of the solar gate there are two circuits there so that I believe is 4 panels solar gate 10 times 240 watt panels tracking and then the next one is six panels but that amp meter is faulty and it starts at about two amps so I'm gonna to have to get to that but let's just see what the total generation of the solar is at the moment because it's as grey as a grey thing really thick heavy cloud and the weather forecast says it's going to rain quite shortly so let's have a look look at that straight on there 
about 5 amps not very much for that amount of solar panels but it's virtually apart from absolutely pouring with rain or at night it's a worst case scenario but if you go up let's just go zoom out a bit and go up to the wind and then we've got the turbine which is supposed to be two and a half kilowatt but um, that's quite rare it's doing something and I know the winds going to get up later on so it's going to rain and blow a gale so that's doing about six or seven amps at the moment later on it will do much more and then we go slightly down and there we go there's the voltmeter now that voltmeter you're going it only shows 20 volts but it's got a 30 volt zener diode behind it so that 20 equals 50 it's because the meter only goes up to 40 volts but for those who can easily get confused I'll put a digital meter on the top you can see it from a distance and it's a bit easier so let's just see what the specific gravity of the batteries is I've set the hydrometer up and drawn some electrolyte up into the tube as you can see the float is floating because there's a gap underneath so let's have a look there's the level of the electrolyte let's just get the camera sorted okay that doesn't look good okay so what it should be what I like is the meniscus that's the level of the electrolyte to be between the white and the green I'll just raise that up a bit about where the G is of good however we've had guests in the lodge and it's been pretty appalling weather for a few days so it looks like the batteries are quite low I know it's going to get windy a bit later on it's going to blow a gale so I'm not too worried but if we we're going to have poor weather for a few days I'd put the backup charger on now the backup charger because we've got mains electricity here it's 10 amps because we're not looking to actually charge the batteries up we're looking to um, level out with consumption so the batteries don't get any lower but if you were off grid with a generator you'd want to be loading the generator up so it's efficient so you'd be charging a lot higher rate for a shorter time if it's going to be poor weather I'd put the backup charger on for maybe 24 or 36 hours just so we don't lower the batteries anymore I'm just going to turn that uh, hydrometer just so you can see the numbers there we go you see we're on about 1200 which is the lowest I'd ever want to take these batteries we really want to be on the 1275 line in the green band there so the rain's arrived with a vengeance and there's a bit more wind so let's just go and have a look see what's happening So there's the wind amp meter getting up towards 40 amps. Let's have a look at the voltmeter 52 and the solar, wherever it is, there it is virtually nothing but then it's really grey 
so what do you expect yeah maybe one amp something like that so there's the difference so that's the start of the new series hopefully we'll have some interesting and entertaining times over the next year we'll see what happens because you never know <laughs>